go. I'm Dominique Jessen. Oh, wait, start over then. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm Dominique Jessen, and this is my Pecha Kucha on Rwanda. Rwanda. So imagine if our whole history was completely based on the conflict between two groups of people. That is the case of Rwanda. It is made up of approximately 85% Hutu, 14% Tutsi, and 1% Twa. Everything was fine in Rwanda besides an economic divide until the English imperialism came into play. First we have the Twa. The Twa originated in the Great Lakes region with the Hutus. Now, being only 1% of the population and primarily hunters, they had less money than Tutsis and Hutus. Also in the genocide, because they were only 1%, they were killed off first. They had many... Ooh, okay. So, differences between um, Hutus and Tutsis. Um, Hutus originated from the Great Lakes region. They were in Rwanda first. And then hundreds of years later, Tutsis <laughs> migrated from Ethiopia and settled there, picking up the language and culture of Hutus. The only difference between the Hutus was that Hutus farmed and Tutsis had cattle. So then the Belgians came in with the English imperialism. In 1918, it became a German colony under the League of Nations. And then... Germany took Belgium and said, you guys are to protect um, the Rwandans. And with that, they started measuring noses and deciding who was a Hutu and who was a Tutsi. So once they figured out who was a Hutu and who was a Tutsi, because Hutus had bigger noses, they started dealing out these identification cards. And with these identification cards, Tutsis, since they were the ones that had more money because of cattle, started having more privileges over and then these identification cards became part of the genocide. And with the genocide, within 100 days, 800,000 Tutsis were killed. This was done by the Hutus because the Tutsis had more power because the Belgians decided they had more money and that they deserved more rights. This was done by hand. The Chinese was sold about three quarters of a million dollars of machetes to the Hutus. They had enough machetes that one in every three people had a machete in Rwanda. Um, no one ever questioned this. So on the top, we have our class. What is in the red box is the Hutus. The three last ones on the right, those are the Tutsis. And what was done by this is that if we took those three people and then expanded it into the population, everybody that has one of these died within this genocide. It's boom, boom, boom. But this was done in a country that was this small. If you take Rwanda, it is about two times the size of Muskegon and Grand Rapids put together. However, it's the 74th largest population country in the world. Now, back to, we've been talking about death a lot, so let's talk about Rwanda birds. All right. There is over 500 species of birds in Rwanda, and they're very beautiful. There are 51 species of bird of prey, like an owl, but they mostly have hawks and eagles. Um, their favorite is the twani eagle. So then we have Paul Kogami, back to the genocide. He was born in Rwanda, but he fled to Uganda because Tutsi killings were not, um, were happening sporadically throughout history. So then he became a Ugandan chief of intelligence. And with that, he helped a man named Musevi, Musevi overthrow the government and form the RPF. Now, the RPF was led by Kagame, and there was 10,000 to 14,000 troops that went into Rwanda during the genocide because Kagame was a Tutsi. And then they took out the hate media that the Hutus used in order to kill the Tutsis and set up the flag system. So then we have the French. Now, the French did not like Kagame and the RPF because the French thought they were there to help everybody, but they did not. Instead, they set up a safe zone called Operation Turquoise, and under this Operation Turquoise safe zone, there were barricades set up and safe trails that led into Congo. So what they did is they had all of these people that they said, we're going to get you to a safe place and put you into Congo. And this right here is the border of Rwanda and Congo. And these are the people that the French just escorted right into the country. Now, um, there have been many movies about Rwanda. 
Most of us have seen Hotel Rwanda, but there is another one called Shooting Dogs. And Shooting Dogs is also known as Beyond the Gates, if anybody has ever seen that one. And it's named after the UN shooting stray dogs that used to come in and try to eat the dead. And then we have a new flag that was set up by Kagami in 2001 because he wanted to represent Hutus and Tutsis together. Um, the new flag has blue for happiness and peace, yellow for economic development, green for hope, and a sun that enlightens, rather than the flag that was for the Hutu militia. So now all these people have died, there's thousands of widows, well somebody has to have compensation, money back. And when I started thinking about it, I was thinking these court systems set up, but what I found is it was this. It's a table with a row of people, right outside, thousands of people looking. But the good thing about Rwanda is as it's been growing, women have earned rights. They make up about 56% of the parliament in Rwandan government, and they have their speaker of the house is a woman. Rwandan economy. Ever since the genocide happened, they had to build up from nothing. Um, the blue is Rwanda, the yellow is the United States. This is the economic growth over 10 years. What we find is that they were actually declining fast in 1994. And what happened is once Kagame was in power and the genocide had ended, they started growing. And then finally, in 2014, 20 years after the genocide, there was three months worth of mourning. It was a celebration of um, what had happened. Um, many schools did reenactments. Children went out and they wore traditional garb. Um, the torch was lit over here by Kagame for 100 days, the symbolic the span of the genocide. And the UN finally admitted its failure to Rwanda of how it did not protect and let thousands of people die. And then that was a short crash course of history about Rwanda. Hey.